an issue exists which I see to be of grave importance. I am speaking of the downfall of glory from our sedentary modern lifestyles. Tell me, friends, truly, do you seek stagnance? Fear not my words, despite the emotions they may provoke. Stagnance could very well be a synonym for comfort in the speaker's lexicon. I believe you enjoy comfort, do you not? It is a somewhat deflated sense of satisfaction, but it's there. I've found something better. Ladies and gentlemen, for your future pleasure, I would like to submit an idea. A theory of satisfaction. Seek not the stagnant comforts that control you as you believe yourself to be controlling them, for achievement is much loftier a high. Should you not aspire to glorious deeds in your life? Remember Nietzsche, who teaches us the Ubermensch. His philosophical ideal was a nihilist living his life as a work of art. And what is an artist, really, but a person who seeks the glorious act of creation? In truth, the electric moment between musing and creating is an amphetamine of the soul, capable of holding a man more strongly than the hold on the shoulders of the most decrepit addict. But lo, the artist glows. See his radiance shining outward. This is his soul he shares with you. As stated by Ginsberg in the appropriate attire, of course, a poet always stands naked before the world. But would you shrug off your limitations as a grand crocodile sliding into the water, leaving dragonflies from its back behind? Art being the greatest cleanser, immersing yourself in it inevitably leaves behind all that which cannot swim. In truth, this is the message behind this and all works which uphold personal freedom. Learn to swim. You are a member of mankind. As such, learning any retention of knowledge is your gift. The space for knowledge, the space for any information, is right there in your head. As a human, it is your privilege to utilize it. You can learn to swim with practice. Be fruitful and multiply. Has it not been said a thousand times in a thousand faiths and philosophies? We are here to retain and to create. Now, when it comes to being fruitful, I'm always reminded of an old adage. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. In this sense, the more knowledge you have, the more capabilities you possess, the more fruitful you are. Now, when it comes to multiplication, I find it difficult to reduce this to reproduction. In all other species of Earth, this is satisfactory, but mankind is unique in being able to take the images from his head and bring them into reality. Whenever we want something, making it ourselves is always an option. You can make a painting that is very personally moving and use it to enhance your life. Does it matter if other people don't gain quite as much satisfaction from the painting as you do? The approval of others should never be a prerequisite for your happiness. So, if you are unsatisfied with anything, make it better. <laughs> All you need are two basic components, knowledge and capability. Now, knowledge is readily attainable by anyone willing to seek it at a library or on a computer, Capability is obtained simply by mixing two parts practice with one part confidence. This is the creative gift, and there's a reason I've shown it to you. Creation is one of the greatest paths to glory, and glory is enough to make life worth living. Now, allow me to clarify that glory is not always synonymous with recognition. The earlier example of painting without approval from others applies here. Is not this person glorious? He has taken colors and space and used them to create an item which moves him deeply each time he sees it. This has made his life more glorious. Now, glory and recognition are not always separate. But, tell me, if you truly desire glory, is recognition necessary at all? I mean, even small notorieties will attract people who will observe you mercilessly. 
from insufferable leeches who seek to make your achievements theirs by proclaiming to support you two envious fiends eager to see a star fall. We must again remember Nietzsche, who said, You seek followers, you seek to multiply yourself by ten, one hundred, one thousand. Seek zeros. Perhaps you will have inspired people with your actions. Perhaps other people will seek to enjoy glory as you do. Don't these people deserve your friendship? It can be generally agreed upon that the presence of like-minded individuals is comforting. These should be your friends and equals. Hopefully this delivery will have affected you on a deep level, and should it happen to change your life, know that you are to me what those you inspire shall be to you. Now, with this speech I desired to create something glorious and inspirational. I aspired to show people that they can change things, and I wanted to leave hints to other artists whose work progresses the human mind. However, I am unsure as to whether I have done any of these things. You see, I may have said these things, but I have not ensured that anyone's life will be improved by them. I may have shown you grand caverns, but that does not mean you will be brave enough to explore them. <laughs> In the end, I have done nothing, because this is not my speech. This speech belongs to you.